and we're gonna start talking about differentials. These gears grab really aggressively and actually lock together. We can take the open diff and... Yeah, no one, no one just, likes those. You just stay back there. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about gears and carriers with the homie Alec here. There's so many options to really nail down what RPM and what gear and what your desirable top speed is and all kinds of factors. What's happening everybody? It's your boy Black Hat here. I'm over at uh, my buddy's shop, Built Industries. Our good friend and Axel extraordinaire, Alec, has a space over here. Basically what we're going to go over this episode is some differences on an open rear end as opposed to uh, a spool and some sort of posse track rear end. We're going to go over to um, Alex's table over there. He's got everything laid out and we're going to start talking about differentials. So let's get right into it. All right, so what exactly does that number that you keep referring to mean with the gear ratio, like the 3.73, the 4.88? What do those numbers represent? Those numbers represent rotations of the driveline in relation to the rotation of the gear, which equates to the rotation of the tire. What? So like a 373 is 3.73 driveline turns, transmission turns, engine turns, versus one tire turn. And by reducing the teeth on the pinion and uh, increasing the teeth on the ring gear or that relationship between the two creates that amount of rotations per turn uh, in relation to the driveline versus the wheel. So by increasing the amount of driveline turns per tire turn, it increases the engine RPM, puts in the power band, makes up for the bigger tires, that sort of thing. So numerically higher numbers uh, is referred to as a lower gear, but that means more driveline turns per tire turn. So that's so. where your, your low end torque comes back. and Yeah, so like a 583 like this one is almost six driveline turns per tire turn, which gotcha. is higher RPM. Now we got the gears down, great. What do the gears essentially connect to? So yeah, this is uh, coming in from your driveline power and this ring gear bolts to what's called a carrier. So these are different examples of carriers. The only actual carrier here that is out of a Ford 9 inch, this is a spool from a, like a trophy truck, a big 40 spline spool there. But otherwise the concept is the same universally. So even though these are out of different vehicles, the application is the same as far as how they function. Most factory differentials at least are gonna have what's called an open axle or open carrier. As you see, there's side gears and spider gears. And this is where your axles come in and attach to these side gears. And your ring gear sits here, rotates the housing, and then spins your axles. What open means is there's no bias. Basically, because it's open and free spinning, it's going to send power to whatever axle has the least amount of traction. So when you're in the snow, if that one tire is on ice and the other tire is on pavement, it's just going to zing the one tire on ice. The peg leg, the one tire fire, all derives from a unit like this where it just favors whichever axle has the least amount of resistance. Oh snap, Undesirable for pretty much anything performance. It becomes unpredictable and uh, not only that, typically open cases um, aren't that strong. There's a lot of moving parts and you can shear you know, center pin or the case or something. So they're pretty much undesirable in the motorsports world. So when you go pick up a junkyard axle and it has an open diff in it, that's something that pretty much has to be changed if it's any kind of serious build. Right, so. right. So we can we can take the open diff and... Yeah, no one, no just, one likes those. You just stay back there. <laughs> the next is what's called a limited slip or posi traction. A lot of people think those are different things. Limited slip, posi traction, posi are all synonymous terms for the same thing. They're not um, open diff and they're not a locker. What they do is try to limit the difference between the two tire speeds. This particular one is from an 8.8 .8, like Explorer axle, which is a common swap in a lot of pre-runners and other projects. And these clutches sit behind these spider gears. So if you see, unlike the open, I cannot move these side to side. To overpower and rotate the tires at different speeds, it has to spin the clutches. So there's clutches that are fixed to the spider gear and clutches that are fixed to the case. And in order for them to spin independently, they have to overpower those clutches. When you're on the throttle, it actually pushes on those clutches harder and will grip. So when you go to spin donuts, it'll load those clutches and spin both tires. But also when you're off the throttle making a U-turn, 
those clutches aren't as loaded and they'll spin and you know you won't chirp the tires around the corner. Not all Posi tractions are clutch style. There's Posi tractions, limited slips, the Detroit True Track, and that one actually has these helical gears that ride on the outside of the side gear. And as you add power to the unit, it will actually push those against the case and cause the whole case to spin and behaves similarly to a clutch style. They're much stronger. They don't utilize a center pin to load the spider gears and um, there's no clutches to wear out. The internals will last much longer than a clutch style posi. As these wear, it gets weaker and weaker and eventually will act like an open. If you do get like a junkyard axle that has a track lock in it, it's likely that it has a lot of miles on it and they could not be very aggressive and you're gonna wanna change the unit or replace the clutches in it anyways. Yeah. <laughs> there we go, go back there with your other friend. Okay, so this is actually a Detroit locker. Okay. Which is a mechanical locker, uh, also made by Detroit. So the difference in that is it's either unlocked or completely locked. So unlike the Posi that's just attempting to spin both tires and there's still some differentiation there in the speeds, these will act like an open diff off the throttle and will um, rotate similarly to an open diff. But when you add power to them, these gears grab really aggressively and actually lock together. And then at that point, it's fully engaged from axle to axle once it bites, you're going up against a rock or up a hill, once that load is there and these gears are engaged, it's like a full spool, both axles engaged until you're back off the throttle. They can be a little bit imp uh, you know, unpredictable when you're in the rain or something. They can lock and unlock and cause the vehicle to jostle depending on what it is. So this is more for something that's off-road mostly and occasionally sees some street. Now there is other types of lockers like electric lockers and air lockers. They have spider gears in them like an open diff. Yeah. But when you engage electronically or with air pressure, a collar slides over one of the side gears. And once one side gear is now fixed to the case, that makes them all fixed to the case. Mm. Once you engage it, it's 100% locked, so you can go crawling in the sand or, or you know, over rocks or whatever, and you know that both axles are going to spin no matter what until you click off the button and release it making it an open diff, easier to turn, and all that stuff. Gotcha, yeah. right on. So those are another option for rock crawlers because you can drive it on the street if you wanted to, and when you get to the trail, you can lock it in when you need it and know that you have 100% traction. Yeah. When it's disengaged, it's just basically an open differential also. A locker is a really good option for somebody who's mostly off-roading and might want to put it on the street a little bit. The limited slip diff is you know, a decent option. Mostly street and Mostly some off-road or performance stuff, yeah. yeah. The open is just garbage. <laughs> and then we have the ultimate yeah. off-road only S better be 98% of the time. Right? Yeah, so <laughs> spool has no moving parts. So it is literally splines all the way through and it locks both axles together. So. There's no differential action. So when you pull a corner on the street in one of these, it's forcing your inside tire to spin just as fast as your outside tire. So that's why you hear race trucks on the street or in a parking lot chirping the tires as they're turning because there is no differential action. It is 100% locked. They make these, they're super strong. There's uh, various spline counts that you can run depending on how big a tire or how much power, but they are 100% predictable. You put it into a corner, you're gonna know exactly what it's gonna do. Desert racing off-road scene, spool is the choice pretty much every time. Very rarely in a desert truck would you need a rear axle to have anything but a spool in it. A rarity too is that uh, this is like the cheapest option, right? Yeah, uh, <laughs> typically, yeah. If you're talking like a 35 or 40 spline, you know, pre-runner, a carrier like a true track can be five, six hundred dollars and a spool can be $200. There's no moving parts to right, it, right, right. but it is the strongest and best option. So pretty much every series pre-runner, desert truck, trophy truck, all that stuff has a full spool in the rear. Yeah. Nice. So there is uh, an option of throwing what they call a mini spool, which is basically a block that does a similar thing and you replace your spider gears with it. Oh, okay. um, they're really inexpensive too, but you still rely on the factory case and center pin. Yeah. So you're kind of asking to break parts and you can really only go up to like 31 spline with them typically. So that's more for like a super budget version of a spool. I wouldn't really recommend it, but it is an option. Well, I mean, a couple hundred bucks is 
still right. pretty yeah. budget. That's now, what that. about the freeway to lock your axles together? The freeway? <laughs> that is the way to oh, the oh, yeah. The option uh, D there is just welding the spider gears on your open case. Yeah, you can weld each gear corner together and it will behave exactly like a spool, but like a mini spool using the case, the center pin, and other parts. So you're not gaining a lot of strength, but it will behave like a full spool. Until you break it. Yeah, and you're hard on factory axles that way and all the above. So <laughs> it's uh, it's an option, but uh, it can lead to being stranded in the trail. So Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, cool, man. I think we got a pretty good sense of what goes on inside of the center section of an axle. We have our gears and what the gear ratios do, why you need certain gear ratios and all that kind of good stuff. And then we have our opens and our limiteds, um, our lockers, and then our, you know, the ultimate bad boy, the spool. Next episode, we're going to go into what do you put all the guts in, right? Uh, so we're going to talk about axles, housing, housing third, members, third all members, all that good stuff. So if you guys enjoyed what you just saw and then you want to see more, please leave a comment, uh, like, subscribe, so we can keep doing what we're doing and bring you guys awesome content. So we will see you back here with Alec for another episode of, I don't know, uh, gears and stuff. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you next time.